Good evening, everyone. We continue our lesson in the study of Leviticus chapter 11. We are now in verse 24, but by way of review, I think it's important for us to bear in mind as we continue the second part as how it all started. Please bear in mind that it starts in verse 1. And then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying to them, and this really tells us that it is God speaking to Moses, and we are told that there is other people besides Aaron that would be the sons of Aaron the remaining two sons of Aaron, and they are given charge of the laws that God has given to Moses in chapters 11 and onwards. And the intent is for them to be the teachers of the sons of Israel. And so they will communicate to the sons of Israel what they can eat, so may eat among the animals that are on the land. And remember, when we talk about the land, it is the land that they are about to receive from God, to inherit from God. We're not talking about the animals all around the world, but it is with context towards the Israelites in their land. And notice what we have done in the first few verses up to verse 8 is that much of what is discussed here are very rule-based. They are not an arbitrary list of animals that they can and cannot eat, but it's based on certain rules. And rules are important so that they realize that if they see a new sort of animal that is not described in this chapter, how they are going to deal with that. And so, Rules are what God is giving, not just plain lists of animals. In verse 24, it begins, And by these you shall become unclean. This, these are the key words here. Become unclean. Please bear in mind this word unclean comes from the word tame. Tame. It's not tame, it's tame. And this is one word, become unclean. And it says here, Whoever touches the carcass of any of them shall be unclean until evening. And so here starts a relatively long series of instructions. And the instructions have to do with being unclean. And this has to do with touching. It's very physical. It's not about looking, but it's in terms of touching. It is in terms of a carcass, a dead body, not one that is alive. And of all the animals that's been described up to verse 23, and anyone who touches, this is important, please bear in mind, these are the conditions. Touches the carcass of any of these animals, they will remain unclean. But it's not forever. It's until the night time. Now this word evening, Arab, is when the sky gets to become dark. This entire set of rules is about unclean and clean. So unclean means impure. Impure. Unclean literally tells us that the, the person is considered dirty and so needs 
to be washed. This is the whole idea of washing of dirt because a person is unclean, impure, or polluted. So please bear in mind the idea that has been conveyed is impure. Now the idea of clean then comes from a different word. It is tahir. Very similar to the Arabic word uh, tahir. This is to be pure, to be clean, and this is from a ritual standpoint. What is important for us to realize is in the eyes of God, clean and unclean is also to do with the state of the person in the eyes of God. And the person who is impure or unclean cannot bring a uh, an offering to God until that impurity is uh, dealt with. Now, the dealing with the uncleanness is now in verse 24 onwards. Also bear in mind that the unclean is about touching. It's something physical. It is not about looking. It is not about thinking. It is not about wondering or meditating. It's, it's very physical. You have to touch it. But touch what? A dead body. Now, the dead body means the animal has died. This is about a corpse, a carcass. Uh, it could be animal. It could be human. It is giving an idea or the imagery of the body that is lifeless. And in that sense, a dead body, whether human or animal. Now, obviously, from a health position standpoint, there, there will be much to talk about. But in the eyes of God, it is to tell the sons of Israel what clean and unclean is. And the priests, Aaron and his sons, are to be the teacher of all these things, and they need to know it very, very clearly. The reason why the sons of Israel is to ensure cleanliness and purity is to not harm the people. Uh, and at this point in time, when you read Leviticus 11, you don't see a health reason at all. The idea of a health reason is very much uh, a later uh, idea, a more modern consideration. And obviously, in those days, the sons of Israel is not about to ask what is healthy or not healthy. God has given this set of rules. Obviously, modern day, we think of the health reason, but actually... It has little to do with health reasons. It is just coincidental when it is to deal with health reasons. The pure and impure is for the sons of Israel to deal with themselves because it is a state that is declared by God. If it is impure, clean it. You can only approach God when you are tahir, we are pure. And you have to make yourself pure. And it has to do with deadness of bodies, the carcasses. Which also tells us that if the animal or any of the animal, which are called unclean, and you touch the body of an animal that is still alive, it doesn't make you unclean. It doesn't constitute an impurity. So all of these must be very clear. And so that one doesn't go overboard in defining purity and impurity. Remember, Leviticus chapter 11 is God's instruction, God's people, God's rules. How God wants his people to behave is clearly defined in chapter 11. And so we continue. As long as we remember 
what we have just described, the rest of these verses talk about the same thing in different categories. Whoever carries part of the carcass of any of them. And who are these? These are the animals declared unclean. He says, shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. So now we have another idea that we need to remember, this idea of wash. The idea of wash here really needs to talk about immersion. Do not think of washing as a modern idea. It is to immerse in water and to stamp with the feet when you wash the clothes. So it is very much the olden days of washing, not the modern day of washing. Immersion is very important. So when a person washes clothes, needs to immerse. When a person washes his body, he needs to immerse. So immersion is the way of cleaning. And after immersion, he remains in a state of uncleanness until the evening. There is no magic that come evening time, everything becomes clean again. No, it literally means typically people wash themselves in the evening. They don't wash themselves in the daytime because they are working. It is part of life. And so when a person is in the evening, he washes himself to become clean. And that is what it means. During the day when a person is unclean, the person is not allowed to approach God. Now let us continue. The carcass of any animal which divides the foot is not cloven hoofed, does not chew the cut or regurgitate the cut or allow the foot to come back up the throat is unclean to you, which we have described earlier. And so God says, if that's the case, everyone who touches it shall become unclean. Remember, we are talking about the carcass, not the animal itself. And so nobody goes off the deep end and becomes uh, 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 an extreme uh, act of saying, oh, everything unclean, you can't touch. There is nothing wrong with a, a clean animal. Uh, animal or an unclean animal that is alive. God made them and they are alive. They are good. It's just that by the rules as given in chapter 11, that you're not supposed to eat them. And thereby, there is a reason. And we will see the reason at the end of this chapter. We also see in verse 27, and whatever goes on its Pause. Understand this as pause. Pause means the palm. Basically, it's the palm or the sole of hands. And we call it pause because it is with reference to animals. And so if the animals, all kinds that goes on all fours, they are unclean to you. So that's also being described here. You are not to eat the lion or the tiger. And so whoever touches any such carcass shall be unclean until evening. So this repeats itself. And remember, not the live animal just that you cannot eat of them, so you don't slaughter them. But if they happen to die, you don't touch them. So whoever carries by touching the carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. It is unclean to you. So understand the idea of tame. You are dirty and you need to Wash. Washing is extremely important. Wash. 
wash your clothes, wash yourself, and eventually we'll see that as well. We read in verse 29, these shall also be unclean to you among the creeping, the ones that creeps means their legs are short, they are very close to the ground, and it, it would be any animal that has very short legs. And so these are the things that creep or crawl or walk very slowly on the land. The mole, the mouse, the lizard, after its kind. These are those, those kinds of creatures that God made. The gecko, the monitor lizard, the land reptile, the sand lizard, the chameleon. Remember, we're not going to debate over what exactly these are. These are animals that's in the land of Israel. Not necessarily the ones that we see today, but we get the picture. These are unclean to you among all that creeps. Whoever touches them when they are dead shall be unclean until evening. Anything on which any of them falls, anything, meaning any of the utensils, the pots, the pans, when they are dead, why? Because this is like a lizard. The lizard does die. So a gecko could fall on your pan, but the pan will be unclean. So in verse 32, it says, the pan will become tame. And so whether it's any item of wood, or clothing, or skin, or sack, these are the things that you make of skin, like a water bag, clothing that you put aside, a sack where you are holding up grain, wood where you use it for a furniture, whatever item it is, in any which work is done. The, the idea here is that you use it to do things. It is not a tree, for example. right? It is a furniture. It is not a piece of uh, skin, but it is something that you use it to do things with perhaps for a tent, perhaps um, for a water bag, then it must be put in water. Remember, water is the means to clean. And so this idea of wash is by water. The ritual cleansing is by water. And so we need to bear that in mind. And it shall be unclean until evening then it will be clean. So it means that if these things are unclean, you cannot use them, say, for preparing an offering because it will cause the offering to be unclean. Because an unclean item, when used, makes whatever you do unclean. And so you need to clean it and wash it. Any earthen vessel in which any of them falls, you shall break. Earthen means a pot means an earthenware made with clay. You shall break it. Why? Because you can always make it again. And whatever is in it shall be unclean. Your pot may have food. And if it falls in, so sorry, everything needs to be dumped, right? It says here, in such a vessel, any edible food upon which water falls becomes unclean. Any drink that may be drunk from it becomes unclean. So if anything falls into it with a when it is water, you can't drink from it. And everything on which a part of the carcass falls shall be unclean. Why? Because people are wondering if it's not the whole thing. A tail of a gecko fell into it. Same thing. Where is an oven or cooking stove, it shall be broken because it can be rebuilt easily. They are unclean and shall be unclean to you. Nevertheless, now in verse 36, it says, with the exception, right? Except. Nevertheless, if it's about a spring, a spring means a flowing stream or a river that has water coming out and it's flowing. A cistern is a, a pot that holds water. 
A spring is living water. A cistern is dead water. This is just a description uh, because water is very scarce. Where there is plenty of water. So a cistern would be like a bath. A spring would be water that's coming out so either of a well or of a, a spring of water uh, by the stream. They will be clean. Which means this. You need to use a lot of water to wash. That's what it means. But whatever touches any such carcass becomes unclean. If the water touches the carcass, it will be unclean. If a part of the carcass falls on any seed that you use to plant, which is to be sown, it remains clean because it hasn't grown yet. It's a, it's a dead part of a seed. But if water is put on the seed, what does that mean? It means the seed will start to germinate. And if a carcass or part of a carcass falls on it, it will be unclean to you. So what we are told is this, that God wants the Israelites to be very careful as to what is impure to deal with it within the day. Don't leave it for the next day. And if you are unclean, it remains unclean until the evening so that the next day you are declared clean again. Verse 39. If any animal which you may eat dies. What does that mean? It means it dies on its own and it is not slaughtered. This is a very, very important aspect. If it dies, if the animal dies, he who touches its dead body shall be unclean until evening. Why? Because it is a carcass now. Unclean carcass, you are unclean. Clean carcass, you are also unclean. He who eats of its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. The idea of washing his clothes, please bear in mind, it also infers that he has to dip himself in and wash himself to become clean. He who carries its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. So washing his clothes always implies it's not just the clothes, it's the entire person that needs to be immersed and washed. And so here lies the challenge. This is an animal which you may eat, but it has died. It means that it is not slaughtered. It died by itself. It died because, I don't know, something killed it. It died because of a disease. Anything which dies, which is not slaughtered by man, not to eat. But if you eat of its carcass, you are unclean. You can eat of the animal, but it died of itself. It's a situation of impurity. And if you happen to eat it, you will be impure. That is basically what verses 39 and 40 says. If you slaughter and eat it, that would be the right way. If you don't slaughter it and it died, and then you eat of it, then you have made yourself unclean. And so you need to deal with it. This is very important. The principle here is that anything that has become unclean needs to be dealt with to clean the impurity, wash it to become pure again at evening time when the sky gets dark. Verse 41. And every creeping thing that creeps on the earth is an abomination, something that is disgusting. You should 
look at it and you feel that you want to vomit, you don't want to eat. And that is the attitude that is being described here. It shall not be eaten. Don't eat such things. What would these be? Like the gecko, the lizard, uh, the mouse, whatever crawls on its belly, whatever goes on all fours, whatever has feet among all creeping things that creeps upon the earth, these you shall not eat. So this includes the snake, the gecko, the mice, and all these creeping, where they have short legs and very close to the ground. They are disgusting, detestable. You shall not make yourselves disgusting. Verse 43 is a very important aspect. You shall not cause yourself to be disgusting with any creeping things that creeps, nor shall you make yourself unclean with them, lest you be defiled by them. Now, the word defiled is the same word as unclean, make unclean. Same, tame, to be defiled, to be unclean. Although in the English, we may read different words, they are the same. You will be made unclean by them. So don't eat. All these, all these, don't eat. And so God says that, why is it so special? The idea that you don't eat so that you don't make yourself unclean is for this reason. Verse 44. This word for literally means because. So now you know the purpose. The purpose is not hygiene. Because Ani Yehovah Elohekem. Ani Yehovah. I am Yehovah. Your Elohim. Then it says here, you shall therefore, and this word here is make yourselves holy. We use this word holy, and remember, holy means special, different. Set apart. Set apart literally means not part of the main. And that's what holy is. God is holy. So make yourselves holy. This word consecrate yourselves, very big word. It's basically to say make yourselves special. Make yourselves different. Set yourselves apart. And you shall be holy. You shall be kadosh. What does that mean? You will be special. If you make yourself special, you'll be special. If you make yourself different, you will be different. If you make yourself set apart, you will be set apart. And then we continue here. For is the same word because Ani is Kadosh Ani, right? Kadosh Ani or Ani Kadosh. I am holy. Jehovah is holy. Jehovah is special. He is different. He is 
set apart from all other Elohim. I am different. So when you set yourselves apart, you will be special. Just like I am special. We go on. Neither shall you defile. Defile is make yourselves unclean. Don't make yourselves unclean with any creeping thing that creeps on earth. That includes don't eat the, 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 the mice, the gecko, the lizard, the snakes, all that kind of stuff. Why? Again, in verse 45, because... Then it says here, Ani Yehovah. I am Yehovah. And I am Yehovah who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim. To be your Elohim. There are many Elohim in Egypt. There are many Elohim in, in Canaan. There are many Elohim in Moab, in Ammon, in Edom. But I am your Elohim because I brought you out of Egypt. Ani Yehovah. That is my name, Yehovah. And so you shall therefore be holy. Now notice this word, be holy. is really a, a command to make yourselves special. Make yourselves special. Why? This word for, because Kadosh Ani or Ani Kadosh. You shall therefore be different because I am different when you do what I tell you you will be different and so all this impurity and, and purity and eat don't eat what you can eat and when you are impure unclean what you're supposed to do all these rituals is to keep themselves pure before God. Because God says, Ani Kadosh. So you be Kadosh too. Why? Because I am special. So you must be special. I'm different. You must be different. I am set apart. So you must set yourselves apart to be different from all the other nations around you, from being different from all the people that you meet in Canaan, from all the people that you have seen in Egypt, I am this God. I'm telling you that you need to do this. So notice the purpose that is being given here has nothing to do with hygiene. It has nothing to do with health care. Now, granted that, yes, in many cases, it is coincidental that there is a hygiene aspect. But that is not what God is telling them. God is telling them, even if you don't understand, just don't do it. Stay pure. Be different. Be holy. Because I am a holy God. I am a pure God. I am a clean God. And so in my instructions to you, Israel, I have declared that these things are clean. In fact, if you look at the entire chapter of chapter 11, most things... I would say 99% of everything that is there that God has created is unclean. In the eyes of God, for the Israelites not to eat. Why? It is strange, you may think, that in Genesis chapter 9, God told Noah, I have given you all the animals as food that you can eat. And then we find that a few hundred years down the road, say six to seven hundred years down the road from 
uh, Noah after the flood, uh, that all animals are okay to eat. And then we find that this is different now. And so now we can see that in Genesis chapter 9, all animals can eat. And now in Leviticus chapter 11, 99%, if not more, the animals cannot be eaten and they are considered unclean. And it's spoken by God to Moses, instructing Aaron and his sons who are priests to tell and teach the sons of Israel this dietary law. And because of that, then we can see there is a uniqueness to the Israelites, God's people, God's rules. The rules have been given to Israel such that all animals really cannot eat. You can only eat a very small group. And so the question is why? And in this idea of the purpose, God says, don't ask why. I said so. That if you do this, you will be clean. And if you follow this, then you are reflecting me, a holy God. You will be a holy nation. You will be identified by your characteristic and your conduct that you are different from everybody else. And they can see what you eat, what you don't eat, what happens when you contaminate yourselves, uh, and how you behave when you are impure or unclean. And how you deal with all these things tells everyone around you that you are different. And why do you do that? Because my God says so. And so to the Israelites, it is God said so. Because by doing what God said, they are to be different. They are to be holy. It has nothing to do with morality. It has to do with being different. This God of Israel tells them to do this as a symbol, as a recognition, as an imagery of being different. And that is the difference between the Israelites and the non-Israelites, that they don't eat most of everything, and the rest of the world eats most of everything. And when you look at the Israelites, hey, why don't they eat these things? Because their God said so, that if they eat, they will be unclean. And they can't approach God when they are unclean. The God of Israel is a holy God, is a different God, is God that is set apart from all other gods. And that is the purpose. So please bear in mind that these instructions of dietary law is not about hygiene. It's about God being different, wanting his people to be different. We come to the end of this chapter in verse 46. He says, this is the law. Again, I don't quite like to use this word law. The Hebrew would say this is the Torah. These are the instructions. And the instructions is about the bahema, the animals, the birds, and every living creature that moves in the waters, every creature that creeps on the earth or on the land, so that you can distinguish. Now, the idea of distinguish is to make distinct, make clear between what is clean and unclean. And so these two words here, between the tame, as you can see, the word tame is unclean, And the word clean here is tahor.
God wants them to be very clear. There is no gray area. So this word distinguish means to make very clear. Like in Genesis chapter 1 in verses 4, right? Basically, God wants the bright part and the dark part to be very distinct, not just mesh together. That you can see maybe it's bright, maybe it's not. In this case, there is no maybe it is unclean, maybe it is clean. God wants them to be very clear. Why? Because being taher or tahor, uh, here in the word tahor, basically it is uh, uh, a description, an adjective of clean. Taher means to make pure. But all comes from the same word, to be clean. To make clean, which is clean. Uh, this is all part of the same group of words. Tahor, Taher. Between the animals that may be eaten and the animals that may not be eaten. Now understand this word, eaten. The word eat comes from the word uh Akal, right? Akal. And the word akal is to eat and to literally uh, to be full of food. The act of eating is to be full of food, to be filled, to be satisfied. Eating is not about chewing and spitting. That is not eat. In the Hebrew, what you can put into your mouth, into your stomach to digest it, to be full so that you can live, is the idea of eating. And so you may not be eaten means don't even bother putting it into your mouth. Don't even want to come close to it. And so thereby keeping yourself pure, taher, instead of tameh. God wants them to be special, different, set apart, be holy. And it is no ambiguity. It must be very clear that is not to be eaten. And this only can be eaten. While everybody else in the world is following Genesis 9, all animals you can eat. The Israelites are to be very distinct from all other people because they are supposed to be a holy nation. Different in their behavior, different in their diet as in Leviticus chapter 11. So when God gives them the Torah, it is to make sure that they reflect a holy God. God's People, God's rules. And God wants His people to be holy because Jehovah is holy. And as a nation, they behave in a certain way to reflect God in a certain way. God is a holy God, a special God, a different God. And so their behavior is different because God said so. All hygiene issues are coincidental. It is secondary. The purpose here is obey so that you are holy, special, different, and set apart. And with this, we come to the end of our session today.